From the Perseid meteor shower to our close approach with Jupiter and Saturn and deep sky objects beyond our solar system. Let's go out and explore the night sky for August 2021. I'm Michael Martin and welcome to Late Night Astronomy. As we go into August of this year, we're going to take a look today on our video at some of the best objects that you can view this month. We'll do this by breaking things down into four categories. Meteor showers, the moon, the planets of our solar system, and deep sky objects. These categories will ensure that regardless of your level of experience or equipment that you may or may not own, there'll be something for you to go out and observe, image, and most importantly, enjoy in the nighttime sky this month. If you enjoy this video, please like it and join our growing community of amateur astronomers by subscribing to this channel. But most importantly, let me know about your observing reports and what you're able to get out and see and image in the comments section below. Now let's begin by taking a look at the easiest and most enjoyable thing you can do in amateur astronomy. And boy, is there a great show coming up this month with the Perseid meteor shower. Meteor showers are great for those new to amateur astronomy because they require absolutely no equipment at all to go out and enjoy. All you need is clear skies, dark skies, and a little bit of patience. August has one of the best shows of the year in the form of the Perseids. But what exactly is a meteor shower? Meteors that you see in the nighttime sky, or what are sometimes called shooting stars, are typically no more larger than a marble or a grain of sand. But they're moving so fast through our atmosphere that they leave a bright streak of light behind that can be a beautiful thing to see. The trail of comets and sometimes asteroids is what the Earth's orbit moves through on a yearly basis, creating this light show in our upper atmosphere. The Perseids can produce a rate of 50 to 75 meteors per hour under dark skies. This August, they peak on the night of August 11th into the early morning of August 12th. To see them, go outside around 11 p.m. on the night of August 11th and look towards the northeast. There you will see the constellation Perseus rising into the sky where these meteors appear to be emanating from. The later you stay up into the early morning of the 12th, the better the show will get as it rises higher and higher into the sky with the moon almost completely out of the way this year for the entirety of the show. Regardless of meteor showers, there are a couple things that you want to do to go outside and maximize your experience. Number one, try to get to as dark of a sky as possible. And I know that's difficult for a lot of us with modern day light pollution, but to really maximize that 50 to 75 meteor per hour maximum that this shower can put out, you're gonna to wanna to see the faint ones. That means you're gonna to wanna to get away from major cities and sources of light pollution. Number two, go out and relax. Recline in a chair, take a blanket, get in a comfortable position looking at the most amount of the sky as you possibly can. Number three, give yourself time. Patience is an incredibly important thing for meteor showers, even impressive ones like the Perseids. Sometimes these meteors can streak at 5, 10, or even 15 minutes apart, especially if you have some light pollution and are only seeing the brighter ones in the nighttime sky. Try to set aside at least one or two hours to go out and enjoy this or any other meteor shower. As we move away from meteor showers in our atmosphere, let's go a little bit deeper into space by talking about our closest neighbor, the moon. The moon is one of the best targets to get into if you're early into amateur astronomy and have a pair of binoculars or a small telescope. But even with the naked eye, it can be fun to track the phases of our closest celestial neighbor. August 8th will be the new moon where it's so close to the sun that you won't be able to view at any time in the nighttime sky. On August 15th, the moon will be at first quarter phase. And on August 22nd, as the sun sets, the full moon rises, beaming down light onto our night for the entire evening. 
The time between the new moon and the first quarter phase is honestly my favorite time to get out and observe and image the lunar surface. Anything beyond that and the moon's almost too bright and loses a good bit of its depth and detail from how the sunlight is directly hitting it. So try to go out in between these initial two dates of new moon and first quarter moon to get your best observations. The moon is one of those targets that really does span the level of experiences in terms of what you can get out of it when you're observing it. If you even don't have a telescope, there's a really interesting thing that you can go out to see right after the new moon begins, and it's called Earthshine. This is when the light reflecting off of the surface of the Earth bounces onto the lunar surface, slightly illuminating the part of it that isn't a crescent moon. It's kind of an eerie thing to see, but it's a pretty remarkable thing that again you can observe or image typically a day or two after the new moon has begun. Regardless of the lunar phase, I found that the best way to image the moon is to take out a cell phone, to connect it to my telescope, and to take pictures and video of it. Some of them I can post instantly, some of them I take to post-processing to do more work with it. But regardless of your experience level, the moon has some incredible things to get you started in this hobby or to go deeper. It just depends on what you want to get out of it. Now let's leave the Earth and the Moon behind and go out deeper into space by talking about the best views of some of our eight planets in the solar system for the month of August. Mercury just swings by the Sun at the start of the month and is going to be a difficult target in the early evening sky right after sunset. On the evening of August 18th, it's actually going to pass really close to Mars, but both will only be about 5 degrees above the horizon, making them near impossible targets for almost all of us to observe or image. Venus through the month of August continues its trek across the early evening sky. One thing I've been doing is tracking the phases of Venus about once a month for an astronomical league observing program called the Galileo Program. So far, not much has changed since I began sketching it in late May, but things start to progress quickly as the shadow of Venus moves at its faster pace throughout the month of August and beyond. Let's move on to Mars, which continues to move away from us as it approaches the Sun from our perspective in its orbit. There really are no good opportunities to observe or image our red friend right now. As bad of a time as it is for Mars, things could not be more different for Jupiter and Saturn which both reach opposition this month, putting them at their closest approach to Earth for the year. By 10 p.m. at the start of the month, my two favorite planets are rising together out of the southeast, and as the month goes on, their positions get higher and higher earlier and earlier in the evening. Let's talk about these two planets as a pair this month, because as I said earlier, they both reach opposition this August. Now, what exactly does that mean? Opposition is when the Earth moves in between the orbit of a planet and the Sun. This puts that planet and Earth at their closest point to each other around this time. For Saturn, that opposition occurs on August 2nd, and for Jupiter, it'll be on the 20th. This means that these are the best times to observe and image these targets once they're high up in the night sky. If you're interested in imaging these targets, I'll be sure to leave a link to two videos I've made about some techniques and software that I use to image Jupiter and Saturn in the description below. As we finish out the solar system for this August, Uranus rises out of the east around midnight, making it an early morning target. The farthest planet out, Neptune, is a tough one to get and will require a larger telescope to resolve any part of its disk and can be found following just behind Saturn and Jupiter coming out of the east to good views after 11 p.m. As we move beyond our solar system into deep space and different parts of the Milky Way, it's important to remember that for some of the targets that we're going to be looking at here, we are going into higher levels of experience and larger equipment that may be needed to get the best views possible. But at the end of the day, light pollution is going to be the main thing that's going to affect some of these targets, particularly the nebulas. Let's start off this month, though, with a target that I talked about last July that I'm really pleased with for an image that I was able to take a few weeks ago. 
and that's the Veil Nebula. I took this image with three hours of data that was stacked and processed, and it pulled out just some remarkable details of this supernova remnant inside of our galaxy. If you're interested in how to take pictures like this, I'll be sure to leave a link in the description below of some videos I put together dealing with astrophotography. The main thing that I want us to focus on for deep sky objects this August is the core of the Milky Way galaxy. It's at one of its best locations in the night sky over the next few months, and I think it's an important one to point out at this time of year. We're gonna go up and down the Milky Way, the dense central core of our own galaxy, looking at some of the best nebulas and star clusters that are available for you to see with binoculars and telescopes. Begin by going out and finding the dense core of our own galaxy with your naked eye. Then move up to binoculars and slowly work your way through the immersive star fields. If you own a telescope, go out and try to find these impressive targets up and down the Milky Way. Let's start with the Wild Duck Cluster M11. This is one of the most impressive open clusters in this part of the night sky and almost appears as a globular cluster due to its density. Next, Move your way down the Milky Way and look for the Eagle Nebula M16 and the Omega Nebula M17. Just below them is the large Sagittarius star cloud, which was so dense that I actually had to go to a darker sky location to verify that it's what I was looking at and not just a smudge of light pollution from my house. Finally, work your way down the Milky Way to M6, the butterfly cluster, and M7. As with all deep sky objects, keep in mind that light pollution and scope size will have a big impact on your experience, particularly with the nebulas listed in today's video. That's just some of the most impressive things in the nighttime sky this August. I'm sure there are some great things that I left off of this list that you're getting out to observe right now. Regardless of what you're able to see or image, please let me know in the comment section below what your experience was like and what you were able to get out and see. Thank you all so much for your continued support, and clear skies from late night astronomy.